Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time it's going to be on Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 3 Core Paper for May or June 2022. Question 1 A. Write the number 6.5 million in figures. So 6.5 million means 6 million plus half million. So that can be written as 6,500,000, like this. That's the answer. B, write 6,538, connect to the nearest 10. The 10 digit is over here, 3. The next digit is 8, which is greater than 5. So we add 1 to 10 digit, 6540. C, work out 6 into 5 is 12 divided by 3. We do multiplication and division first, so it's 30 plus 4, which is equal to 34. That's the answer. D. 9, 16, 18, 29, 57, 64, 87, 96. From this list of numbers, write down 1, a factor of 48, 16. Why? 16 into 3 is equal to 48. 2, a cube number, 64, because 4 cubed is equal to 64. C, a prime number, 29. It's only divisible by 1 and 29. Note that all the other numbers are even numbers, or for 57 and 87, they're divisible by 3. E, find the value of root 0 0.001225. Can you use a calculator for this? 0 0.001225 square root. We get 0 0.035. That's the answer. F, find the reciprocal of 8. Reciprocal means something which you multiply by 8 to get 1. That means we do 1 divided by 8, which is equal to 1 by 8 to get the reciprocal. That's the answer. G, find the value of 8 to the power of 0. 1, because anything to the power of 0 is 1. H, 1. Write 180 as a product of its prime factors. We can make a factor tree. 180 can be written as 290, and then 2 into 45, and then 3 into 15, 3 into 5. So now these prime factors are the ones we need to write down. So 180 is equal to 2 into 2 into 3 into 3 into 5. This can be written as 2 squared into 3 squared into 5. It's the answer. Two, find the lowest common multiple LCM of 160 and 180. So we can take the common factors of it. So first we have two, 80 and 90. Another two, 40 and 45. And then we can take a five to get eight and nine. There are no more common factors of these two numbers, so we can leave it. Now, we need to multiply the numbers over here. Multiply that with the numbers at the bottom. So the LCM is equal to 2 into 2 into 5 into 8 into 9. And we can get the answer, 1,440. That's the answer. All right, the mass of an aircraft, M tons, is 473 tons, correct to the nearest ton. Complete the statement about the value of M. So which is the nearest ton, then what's the lowest value? 472.5 in tons. Now what's the greatest value? It's 473.5. If you noticed, these two values are the lower and upper bounds. That's the answer. 2, A. Write the number of sides of a hexagon. Hexagon has six sides. That's the answer. B. In triangle ABC, AB equals AC. So these two sides are equal, shown by these lines. 1. Write down the mathematical name for this type of triangle. Because there are two sides equal, it is an isosceles triangle. That's the answer. 2. Measure angle CAB. So when you measure this angle using a protractor, we get 124 degrees. 
That's the answer. And three, write down the mathematical name for this angle. Because it's greater than 90 degrees and less than 180 degrees, it is an obtuse angle. That's the answer. See, show that the interior angle of a regular pentagon is 108 degrees. So a pentagon has five sides. Now we can use the sum of interior angles formula. Sum of interior angles equals 180 into n minus 2. It's equal to 180 into 5 minus 2 because n is equal to the number of sides. Let me do this, 180 into 3, 540 degrees. So one interior angle is equal to 540 by 5, which is 108 degrees. This formula only works for regular pentagons and regular polygons. D. ABCD is a parallelogram. The reflex angle at D is 248 degrees. Find angle DCB this angle. So we can see because there's a parallelogram, AD and BC are parallel. Same thing for AB and DC. They're also parallel. That's why I've drawn the arrows here. Using this information, we can find the value of angle DCB. So angle ADC, which is this angle, not the reflex one, it's equal to 360 minus 248, which is equal to 112 degrees. I'll mark that there. Now for this angle, because these two sides are parallel, that means that these two angles will add up to 180 degrees. That means that the angle DCB is equal to 180 minus 112 which is equal to 68 degrees. That's the answer. E, the angles of a triangle are in the ratio 3 is to 5 is to 7. Find the size of the largest angle in the triangle. So 3 plus 5 plus 7 is equal to how many parts? 15 parts. That's equal to 180 degrees. One part is equal to 180 by 15, which is 12 degrees. That means 7 parts for the largest angle is equal to 12 into 7, which is 84 degrees. That's the answer. Question 3. Sachin, his wife, and three children go on a coach holiday. A. Each adult ticket costs $375, and each child ticket costs $194. Work out the total cost of the tickets. So there will be two adult tickets for Sachin and his wife and three child tickets for the three children. That's two into 375 plus three into 194. Let's use a calculator. Two into 375 is equal to 750 plus three into 194. It's equal to $1332,332. That's the answer. B. A meal costs $110 plus a service charge of 18%. Calculate the total cost of the meal. So that's equal to increase of 80% of 110. That means 118 by 100 into 110. We can cancel that out. Now a calculator can be used. To get... $129.80. It's the answer. C. One day, the temperature at midday is 16 degrees. At midnight, the temperature has fallen by 23 degrees. Work out the temperature at midnight. That's 16 minus 23, which is equal to negative 7 degrees Celsius. It's the answer. D. Sachin spends $768 on holiday. He spends three-eighths of this amount on presents. Find out how much he spends on presents. That's equal to three by eight into 768. And we can calculate the answer. 768 into three divided by eight. 
$288. That's the answer. E. There are 604 passengers on the holiday. 1. The coach company uses coaches which can carry 46 passengers. Work out the number of coaches needed. So 604 divided by 46. Let's get that calculated out. 604 divided by 46. 13.13. And we can make this as 13 coaches plus one extra for the remaining decimal of 46. So it will be less than 46, but still we need one extra coach for them. 14. This is the answer. 2. 268 of the 604 passengers are women. Find the percentage of passengers that are women. Now let's get a calculator to use this. 268 by 604 into 100%. Let's do this. We get 44.4% to one decimal place. That's the answer. Question F. A coach travels at an average speed of 54 kilometers an hour. Find how long in hours and minutes this coach takes to travel 126 kilometers. So speed is equal to distance by time. That means time is equal to distance by speed if we rearrange the formula. That's equal to 126 by 54. Let's use our calculator. 126 divided by 54, which is equal to 2.33333 and so on, using the decimal for uh, the cutting. That's 2, 1 by 3 hours. And that's equal to 2 hours and 20 minutes. That's the answer. Question 4. A. The diagram shows a right angle triangular prism. 1. On the 1 cm square grid, complete a net of this prism. One face has been drawn for you. So this is a 1 cm square grid. So this length is 1 cm. This length is also 1 cm. This means that this is 3 cm. This is 7 cm. So they drew the rectangular base already. Now... We did on this side and this side. First thing, we'll find this length. Using Pythagoras theorem, we can make it as the root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is equal to the root of 25, which is 5 centimeters. So we can attach that to the base. So now we know the length over here. So we can use this side, the other side over there, which is four centimeters by seven centimeters, like this. And then, because this side is attached to this side, we can draw the other one as well, which is five centimeters by seven centimeters. There we go. Now we can draw the two triangles on either side of the base to this one. And the triangles are connected at the three centimeter point. And also, they're going to connect, this side is going to connect with this one. So that side should be down over here. And the hypotenuse should be going upwards. So two triangles will be like this. That's the answer. To work out the volume of this prism, that's equal to the area of the cross section, which is the triangle, into the length. It's equal to half into four into 3, into 7. Now we can cancel out 2, then that's 42 centimeters cubed. That's the answer. B. The diagram shows a rectangle with 6 congruent circles inside. Congruent means all of them are the exact same thing. Each circle touches the adjacent circles and the sides of the rectangle. The radius of each circle is 8 centimeters. 1. Show that the length of the rectangle is 48 centimeters. So let's just mark the centers of all of these circles. The approximate centers, not the exact ones. Now we know that this length is the radius. 
which is eight centimeters. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six radiuses to span from one point to the other point. So six radii, six into eight centimeters is equal to forty-eight centimeters, which is the length of the rectangle. That's the answer. Two, find the area of the rectangle. Give the units of your answer. So you know that this is forty-eight centimeters. Now, how much radii should it take to span the width? One, two, three, four radii. So that's equal to width is equal to four into eight, which is equal to thirty-two centimeters. Now, area is equal to forty-eight into thirty-two, and let's use. The calculator for this. Forty-eight into thirty-two, which is thousand five hundred thirty-six centimeters square. That's the answer. Three. Calculate the percentage of the rectangle that's shaded. So we need to find the area of one of these circles here, multiply it by six and subtract it from. The value we found in the previous question, which is one five three six centimeter squared. So the area of one circle is equal to pi r squared, which is equal to pi into eight squared. Let's use a calculator for this. Eight squared is equal to sixty four. Multiply by pi, we get two hundred one point zero six. Centimeters square. Now the area of six circles is equal to six into two hundred one point zero six. Let's do that. It's equal to one two zero six point three seven centimeters squared. Now the area of shaded is equal to. One five three six minus one two zero six point three seven. So let's do that on our calculator. One five three six minus one two zero six point three seven. We twenty nine point six three centimeters squared. Percentage will be three twenty nine point six three. By one five three six into hundred percent. That's the shaded area. Divide by one five three six into hundred. It's equal to twenty one point five percent. That's the answer. Question five. A. The grid shows point A. One. Write down the coordinates of point A. Coordinates for x is three, y is one, so three comma one. Two on the grid, plot the point B at minus one comma three. So x equals minus one is over here, y equals three is over here. The point intersection is over there, so that's point B. Three, see the point on the grid whose coordinates are whole numbers. On the grid, mark point C, so the triangle ABC is isosceles. So we need to find the point C. So that the distance from A to C is equal to the distance from B to C. So like this, it should be a triangle, and it cannot be a negative because they are all whole numbers. It looks like the point two comma four actually satisfies both of the conditions. So let's draw a triangle just to show why. The length of this. The distance between B and C is one unit up and three units right. The distance from A to C is one unit left and three units up. So the distance is actually the same, even though the movement of the points are different. But still, B C and A C are equal. B. The diagram shows the rhombus. One. Write down the order of rotation symmetry. Two. Two. On the diagram, draw all the lines of symmetry. 
So the lines of symmetry of the rhombus actually only lead to the diagonals. One line like this. And the other line like this. So the two lines of symmetry, these are the only two lines. They're actually the diagonals of the rhombus. That's the answer. The grid shows triangles A, B, C. One, fully describe the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. We can see that triangle B is bigger than triangle A, therefore it's an enlargement. How much bigger? That's the scale factor. We can see that in triangle A, this line has two units length, while in triangle B, the same line has four units length. So it has multiplied by two, therefore scale factor is two. And now the center, we can see there's a common point between A and B. They are also corresponding point. Therefore, that's the center, 2, 1. 2. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle C over here. So because it's flipped like this and it's a single transformation, therefore, it's a rotation. Its orientation has been different. So the center is actually 0, 0, or the origin, y, over here, because the distance between the corresponding points and the center are equal all the time. So this distance is equal. This is also equal for each of them. And now rotation of how much degrees? 180 degrees, because 90 degrees comes here, 180 degrees comes here into this quadrant of the grid. 3. Draw the image of A. Triangle A after translation by the vector minus 5, 3. So minus 5 in the x-axis means, let's take this point, going left direction 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steps. And then 3 means going up 1, 2, 3. So we end up at the point minus 3, 4 for that point. Now we can simply draw triangle A in the same orientation. Length of 2 cm, 3 cm, and draw the hypotenuse. So this is triangle A after translation. So A1 is not that. B, triangle A after the reflection in the line y equals minus 2. So line y equals minus 2 is over here. And the reflection that line, let's check this point once again, reflect it. Distance of 3, same thing on the other side. So we get the point down here. Do the same thing for the other two points. Get this one down at 2, comma, minus 7. And then the last one at 5, comma, minus 5. Now we simply join the points. And this can be done as triangle A2. That's the answer. Question 6. A. A football team has W wins and D draws. The team scores 3 points for each win and 1 point for each draw. Write an expression in terms of W and D for the total number of points scored by the team. So 3 points for 1 win. That means W into 3 is the number of points gained by win. 3W. And then, same reason, 1 into D is the number of points gained by a draw, so D. So that's the answer, 3W plus D. B. Athletic, Rovers and United are three football teams. Athletic have a point score of X. Rovers have 12 points more than Athletic's point score. United have three points fewer than twice Athletic's point score. Total point score is 121 for all three teams. Use this info to write down an equation in terms of x. So the equation to work out the point score for each team. Now for athletic, it's equal to x. For rovers, it's equal to 12 points more than x, so x plus 12. And then for united, it's 3 points fewer than 2 in the athletic score, so 2x minus 3. Now the total point score, which means when we add all three of them, it's 121. So x plus x plus 12 
plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 121. 4x plus 9 is equal to 121. 4x is equal to 112. x is equal to 28. 28 points by athletic. Now the other is equal to 28 plus 12, which is equal to 40 points. And united is equal to 2 into 28 minus 3, which is equal to 53 points. That's the answer. C. Simplify 1. 4a minus 3b plus 5a plus 6b. Now 4a plus 5a is 9a and negative 3b plus 6b is equal to 3b. So the answer is 9a plus 3b. This can also be written after factorizing it as 3 into 3a plus b. Both answers are correct. 2. 6 into 2x plus 1 minus 5 into x minus 2. We can multiply out the brackets. 12x plus 6 minus 5x plus 10. Because minus 5 into minus 2 is 10. Positive 10. This can be written as 7x plus 16. D. Solve the simultaneous equations. You must show all your working. So now we can label this as equation 1. This as equation 2. Now let's make the x terms as common coefficients which means this is 6 and this is 6 as well. So, equation 1 into 2, that becomes 6x plus 10y equals 22. We can label this as equation 3. And then the equation 2 into 3 to get 6x, and then minus 9y is equal to 60. That's 4. Now we can do 3 minus 4 to cancel out the 6x. And then... We get, because of minus, we cancel out the minuses, 19y is equal to 22 minus 60, negative 38, y equals minus 2. Now we can substitute y equals minus 2 into equation 2. 2x minus 3 into minus 2 is equal to 20. 2x plus 6 equals 20, 2x equals 14, x equals 7. That's the answer. And y is equal to minus 2, of course. Question 7. A. A class of 15 students take two tests in science, paper 1 and paper 2. The scores for each student are shown in the table. So there are 15 scores in paper 1, 15 scores in paper 2 because 15 students. Number 1. Complete the scatter diagram. The first 13 points over here, which are shaded, have been plotted for you. So we need to plot these two. So student number 14 got 23 in paper 1. That is over here. And you got 30 in paper 2. It goes over there. If you marked it correctly, you should make a point right there. And the last student, and the last student, student 15, got 42 in paper 1. And got 58 in paper 2, which goes all the way up here. Which you mark over there, which is right there. That's the answer. 2. What type of correlation is shown in the scatter diagram? So we can see over here that the correlation is actually going in a positive gradient or a positive slope. That means. It's a positive correlation. Positive. 3. On the grid, draw a line of best fit. So, a line of best fit is like a line which passes through as many points as possible. In this case, it's something like this. And now for the final part. 4. Another student scores 24 on paper 1. Use your line of best fit to find the estimate for the score on paper 2. So, let's see, 24 in paper 1, it's over here. The score in paper 2, according to the line of best fit, is 36. That's the answer. B. 140 students choose which subjects they want to study. 122 chose biology, 55 chose chemistry, and 2 chose none. Number one, complete the Venn diagram. 
so there will be two students outside. Now there are 138 students remaining. But when we add these two, we get 177. Then how do we get 138? Some of them do both biology and chemistry. So 177 minus 138, which means there are 39 people doing both. 39. And then we subtract 39 from each of these. 122 minus 39 is equal to 83, so 83 biology only. And then 55 minus 39, we get 16. 16 chemistry only. And that's it, the Venn diagram's completed. Two, one of these students is picked at random. Find the probability that the student chooses biology and chemistry, which means inside here. Total students is 140. People who study biology and chemistry is 39. So that's it, the probability is 39 by 140. That's the answer. Question eight, the grid shows line L, A. Find the equation of this line. Give your answer in the form y equals mx plus c. Let's take two random points, this point and this point. They should be on the line. You can take any points on this line. I've just taken two examples. So this is 0, 2. This is minus 2, 3. We're doing this to find the gradient. m is equal to, let's take this point as point 1, and this point as point 2. So I'll write that, p2, p1 here. So the formula is y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1. So y2 is 3, y1 is 2. So 3 minus 2 by minus 2 is x2 and x1 is 0. So minus 2 minus 0. That's equal to minus half. And then c is equal to the y-intercept, which is where does the line intersect the y-axis, 0, 0,2. comma two. The value here is 2, so that's why c is equal to 2. So when we substitute these two values inside y equals mx plus c, we get y equals minus half x plus 2. You can write it as y equals 2 minus half x. It's the same thing. B, 1. Complete the table of values for y equals 2x plus 5. So when x equal to minus 3, we substitute y is equal to 2 into minus 3 plus 5 minus 6 plus 5, which is minus 1. That's the answer. 2. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals 2x plus 5. So we mark these three points on the graph and connect them. That's all. Minus 5 comma minus 5 is over here. Minus 3 comma minus 1 is over here. 0 comma 5 is up here. We can simply connect these points now. That's the answer. C. Write down the coordinates of the point which lies on both line L and the graph of y equals 2x plus 5. So line L is this line, which has this equation, y equals minus half x plus 2. And this y equals 2x plus 5 is this line. The point of intersection is over there. And it has x equals minus 1.2 and y equals 2.6. So we can write the point as minus 1.2 comma 2.6. D. Write down the equation of the line that is parallel to y equals 2x plus 5, pass it through the point 0 comma 18. So this means that the y-intercept is 18. C is equal to 18. And m is the same, 2, because the lines are parallel. So that means y is equal to 2x plus 18. That's the answer. y equals 2x plus 18. 9. A. Complete the table of values for y equals 12 by x and x is now equal to 0. So when x is equal to minus 6, y is equal to 12 by minus 6, which is equal to minus 2. x is equal to minus 3, y is equal to 12 by minus 3, which is equal to minus 4. When x is equal to minus 1, y is equal to 12 by minus 1, minus 12. Same thing we can do to get the answers for 1 comma 12, 3 comma 4, and 6 comma 2. B. On the grid, draw the graph of y equals 12 by x for minus 6 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1 
and 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 6, which are these points over here. Minus 6 comma minus 2, minus 4 comma minus 3 to the middle, minus 3 comma minus 4 is over here, minus 2 comma minus 6, minus 1 comma minus 12. And then on the positive side, 1 comma 12, 2 comma 6 over here, 3 comma 4, 4 comma 3 in the middle there, and 6 comma 2. Now we can simply make curves like this and like this. This kind of graph is also called a reciprocal graph, where x is never equal to 0. See, on the grid, draw the line y equals 5. That's quite simple. We just take y equals 5. Draw a line between all the points that go there. So y equals 5. D. Use your graph to solve the equation 12 by x is equal to 5. Now if we see the intersection point between this line and this curve, you can see it's about 2.4. So x is equal to 2.4. Which because it's over here. That's the answer. With that, I come to the end of my video. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, Share these videos with your friends and family and comment on how you think this video was. And with this, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye.